Welcome to Inspiring People, the show about inspiring people, those who are inspired and those who inspire others. We all know them. They're good examples, they're supportive, they embrace life, they live inspiring lives in their day-to-day -day actions, and in turn, inspire others to do the same. Hi, welcome to Inspiring People. My name is Mary Otto and I'm the host of the show. With me today is my guest, Anna D. Olson. Welcome to the show, Anna. Thank you. And is it okay if I call you Ann? That's okay. Absolutely. Okay, I answered it either. Because <laughs> I, I think I, I know you better as Ann than I do as Anna. Sure, sure. So, um, Anna, or Ann, let's begin by having you tell us a little bit about, your, about yourself. Um, and let's start with having you tell about your immediate family. Yes, I, I am married. Mm -hmm. To my husband, and we have two children. We have a seven-year-old that goes that is in second grade and goes to school, and our three-year-old girl, Jasmine, is in um, daycare. She oh. goes to daycare every day. Okay, so. and where do you live at? We live in New York Mills. Okay, and um, how long have you lived in New York Mills? I let's see. It's been seven years. Okay, seven years. And um, as you know, Anne, one of the reasons, the main reason for this show is that uh, we want to talk to people who are inspiring and also inspire others at the same time. So um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about your, your other family, your family of origin, and then lead into the kind of discussion that we're going to be having today, okay? Sure, sure. I was born and raised by Amish parents. My parents and four of my siblings are still Amish today. There's uh, five of them, or five others besides me, that have left the Amish culture. And um, I am the fifth child of ten. Um, mm -hmm. And whereabouts, whereabouts oh, yeah. did you live? We, or does your family still live? Yeah. Your family of origin? My parents live in Wisconsin right now. Mm -hmm. And I was born in Missouri. We lived there for a couple years, and then we moved to Wisconsin. And um, from there, we moved to Minnesota, which is very local here. Mm -hmm. And um, then in 1984, we moved back, the family moved back to Wisconsin, and I came back here in 90, 1994. And at that time, did you come back by yourself? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Amish tradition in which you grew up and um, maybe share some insights for those people who don't know a lot about growing up Amish and what, what changes you made in your life as a result of that. Okay. Well, the Amish, um, they don't have electricity. They don't have any of the modern conveniences. We, our form of transportation was horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. And the buggies are made for transportation, not comfort. Mm -hmm. And um, so we didn't have TV, radio, um, none of that in the mm -hmm. house. And um, um, for the last eight years that I was Amish, we lived on a farm. And so we milked a lot of cows and milked them by hand and, and did all the gardening and and the sewing and mm -hmm. you know all, all the things that um, maybe a generation past used to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at what point in your growing up, in your experience, um, and did you realize that maybe um, you would be better or you, would, you wanted to lead a different life than the life that you were leading? Well, I would say that was over a period of probably 10 years. Okay. I was 24 when I had left. Oh, really? Okay. And as I think back, I, when I was 15, I watched the kids, the neighbor kids, get on the bus to go to high school. And I wanted to go to high school. I really wanted to go to high school. I wanted to go to college. But that's not part of the Amish culture. Okay. So that isn't really, um, that's not an option. But I was 24 then, and you know, things happened throughout the years. And when I was 24, I finally made the decision to that that wasn't going to be my lifestyle for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so then I left. Okay. And when you say you left, what exactly did that mean for you? And, and what did you do when you, when you finally left? I was, at the time that I left, I was babysitting for a couple, and a non-Amish couple, actually. And they would pick me up from my mom and dad's house on Monday morning, and I would stay at their house all week. So I was oh, like okay. their nanny. Mm -hmm. When I left, I just quit going home on the weekend. Penny picked me up on Monday morning. And Penny being your employer, correct? Yes, okay. Penny was my employer. She mm -hmm. picked me up on Monday morning, and then I sent the letter to my mom and dad 
and to the um, deacon of the church to tell them that I wasn't planning on coming back at this time. Okay. And so at that point, then you decided not to return to the home, right? To the family home? Correct. Okay. So then what were some of your next steps in, this had to be a very emotional, difficult time for you as you were, you know, leaving your family and your traditions and so on behind. How did you go about, how did you go about doing that? Can you give some examples of steps that you had to take um, to make that happen, to make that transition? Sure. I, it was very hard. It was very emotional, and many times it was very tiring to me. But I left in February, and I didn't see my folks again, although they lived only 12 miles away. I didn't see them again until um, July. Oh, and- I finally had enough self-confidence to know that I can go home and come back to John mm-hmm. and Penny's house because mm-hmm. that was the fear is that if I go home, I won't come back. And I didn't want to do that. <clears throat> I wanted to have enough self-confidence to do that. And it was very hard. It was many hours of talking, Penny and I, spending many hours till or many nights until 2 a.m. speaking or talking to each other. And mm-hmm. she really was my rock at that point mm-hmm. to lean on. So that mm-hmm. was very, I treasure that so much. Mm-hmm. And she was, they were the ones that helped me, John and Penny did. Okay. So, and when you when you did go um, did go back there was it was it painful? I mean, I, I'm sure there was a certain amount of pain involved. But how were you able to handle that situation? Well, yes, it was. There was a lot of tension in the air. You could almost cut it with a knife. Mm-hmm. But I had dressed back in the Amish clothes to oh, go home did. that okay. day, um, just because of the fear of of what you know. I, mm-hmm. I just didn't know for sure how to what I was going to uh, find, mm-hmm. and. Um, it, it, it went fairly well, but every time I went home, I heard about how wrong it was to leave, and that was very emotionally draining for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that happened for a couple years. Oh, it did before okay. it got better. Okay. But it seemed to get better after I had um, my husband uh, on my arm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody so, there to be, be literally beside you right, to help you. Right. Right. Okay. That was that. That really helped sure. it. So. so how does uh, a young woman leave a, a, you know, a society like that, leave a, a, a family like that, and then start a uh, start a new light? Well, what was one of the first steps you took? Did we? Did you get a job? Did you go to school? Did you? How did? You, what were some of those initial steps that you took to? Well, at first I had that shelter, the kind of the same shelter that I had at home. Mm-hmm. But leaving that sheltered lifestyle isn't easy, and it's 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 a lot to le- you have to learn a lot to leave mm-hmm. that. But living at John and Penny's house was um, the shelter that I had. But then it got to the point where they didn't need a babysitter anymore, and so that I ended up having to get a job, and I moved out into my own apartment, and talk about being completely lost. I was living at home with a family of 12. Sure. And then living at John and Penny's with kids around. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden I'm going home to an empty house every evening. Mm-hmm. And that was really hard to get used to. Um, I got a job in April of that year. I left in February. In April I got my ears pierced. Oh, big step. That was I'm a sure. big step. Yes. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, in August I got my driver's license. Oh, good for you. And then I think it was November, October or November when I got my first job okay. outside. And the first goal was to get my GED so I can attend college. Oh, great. To get to my dream, which was to go to college. college. So. Well, I think what we'll do at this point, we're going to wrap up our first part of our interview, the first part of our interview with um, Anne, and then we'll be back for part two um, and find out how Anne was able to continue in um, the new life that she was living for herself. Thank you.